Hi guys, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickery of Space Command. And I just found an amazing thing, an amazing treasure of rarities. Uh, as you know, we have we got the Kickstarter campaign going and we're offering, you know, a Star Trek crate filled with scripts and premises and all sorts of stuff from Next Gen, DS9, etc. And then there's also uh, my Star Trek scrapbooks that I kept when I was a kid, when I was like 10 years old, when Star Trek was on the air. So those are two perks that you can get now when you go to the Kickstarter campaign, but... One thing I just discovered that I didn't remember that I had was this. This is the Star Trek dossier, okay? And this is stuff I collected from Star Trek. Now, uh, there's stuff in here primarily from the original Star Trek series and some things from Next Gen. We're gonna go through all of it, I'll show it, because you can get a PDF of all of these amazing rarities, and I promise you, you will not be able to find them anywhere else. Because here's the fascinating thing about Star Trek, Star Trek was very much a dark horse when it debuted, and Gene Roddenberry had designed or had hired, you know, Wa Ming Cheng and others to design uh, the phaser, the tricorder, the communicator, all these cool looking things. And his idea was that they would be sold as toys. But because Star Trek wasn't a big hit and wasn't known by most of the toy companies, uh, didn't have they didn't have the fan base it would later have, they had a hell of a time getting toy deals. And so as a result, to find um items from the original run, run of Star Trek from 1966 to 69 is very rare. And these are items that I gathered when, when the show was on, when I was 10 years old. And, uh, uh, and so, so, you know, this is, uh, let me just go through you, through it with you, because it's phenomenal, and you'll be getting a PDF of all of this stuff, so you can read it and, and scan through it and, and you name it. So, okay, so I'm opening it up, and first of all, during the run of the show, and this one is 1968, you could join the, the Leonard Nimoy fan club. Now this is mimeographed, this is not a Xerox. And as you see, it's filled with articles about Leonard Nimoy and photos from his life and all of that stuff. And it also included a little tiny glossy photo of him and it says Dot Records because that was his recording label, a subsidiary of Paramount when, um, or actually Dot Records may not have been, it's, I think it just so shows the Paramount logo and the Dot Records logo, but um, but his first few albums were released on Dot. And so, and there's like cartoons in here, you know, like and uh, the sketches by fans, and it just goes on and on, you know, things from his life. It's really, really cool. And I've never seen another copy of this. So that's one thing in here. Then also, I tore this from TV Guide at the time, uh, back then, there were no VCRs. There was no way to even even record still images from television. So this was a TV Guide article on how to take photos off the screen. So I saved that because that's something I wanted to do. This is a photo of Mr. Spock that I pulled from some magazine of the era. Let's see, we have, this is my stepmother. When I was a kid, my stepmother wrote this letter, or this was the response she got. She wrote a letter to, to Star Trek asking if I could visit the set as a Christmas present. And this is their response on, on the incredibly cool Star Trek stationery. This is their response on Star Trek stationery. And this is dated November 15th, 1968. It's sung, signed by Rick Carter, assistant to Gene Roddenberry. And it says, yes, you can come, your son can go, come visit. So that's really, really cool. And uh, let's see what else we have in here. Let's, let's just go. Yeah. Now this, is when I was 10 with my friend Stuart Robinson, I started to write my own Star Trek script. It was called Sim Something Wicked This Way Come, and we were going to shoot our own Star Trek Super 8 film. If you've seen the movie Super 8, you know what that, uh, what that kind of thing was like, and uh, this is the beginning of the script um, that we were intending to shoot. So let's see what else do we have here. We have, okay, so Gene Roddenberry was so frustrated by the fact he couldn't get the kind of toy deals he wanted, that he started his own company called Lincoln Enterprises. And this is Star Trek catalog number one from Gene Roddenberry's own company when Star Trek was on the air. And it says, your passport to a galaxy of authentic Star Trek collector's items. And uh, this was Gene Roddenberry selling stuff from his own show that was on the air at the time. And it includes portraits of the characters, it includes scripts by the characters, I mean, scripts for the episodes. It includes all incredible stuff. And again, it, you would get um, a, a, a PDF of this entire catalog. They, one of the things they sold in the catalog was your own Star Trek stationery with uh, drawings 
I think they were by Alicia Austin, but I'm not sure if I'm right about that. She was a, an artist at the time. And, uh, but you can see these, these are very fun little, little images. And you would be using these as stationery. So that's Mr. Scott, of course, Scotty. And again, I've never seen another copy of this anywhere. And then they also published, during the run of the show, they published, the Gene Roddenberry's office, published their own fanzine called Inside Star Trek. And I believe the first five issues of that are in here. And, uh, and it was P.O. Box 38429, Hollywood, California. And this was, again, you know, just, um, you know, it's, a fan, it's, it's the first Star Trek fanzine. And so this issue is, uh, you know, has, and, and again, I think this was on, done on a typewriter and probably mimeographed, not Xeroxed. And uh, this is uh, Star Trek VI, so I have the first six. So this is William Ware Theis, who was the uh, famed costume designer of Star Trek and Star Trek Next Gen. And, uh, and then this is a little flyer where you could get your own special Star Trek coin medallion. This is, this is in the envelope, and I drew my own uh, enterprise there at 10. This is the Leonard Nimoy National Association of, of Fans. And inside are my, uh, you know, there's all sorts of stuff. There's all these fanzines that they mailed. And here I can, I, I won't pull this all out, but you can see that it's filled with, it just, it just filled to the brim with cool Leonard Nimoy stuff and a welcome to the Leonard Nimoy Fan Society, on and on. And uh, again, I don't know where you would find this anywhere other than here. Plus, and again, Lincoln Enterprises so sold, when Star Trek was on, they sold postcards of the characters. Here's a, look, this looks like Shatner Bowling, but that's not what it is, of course. Uh, you know, DeForest Kelly, George Takei. From another source, at the same time, I got this photo of all of them on the transporter. Here's a, Mr. Scott, Uhura, and of course, the Enterprise. Now, one thing that's very interesting about this photo of the Enterprise, and you probably can't see it here, but it's being hung from nylon strings. And if you look closely, you can see them. So, <laughs> so that's the actual model they use. Then another thing that they sold in their little catalog was United Federation of Planets. And this is has a duplicate of Roddenberry's signature, and it says Mark. S. Spock Zikri, which is, you know, what any 10-year-old would write. I mean, if they had that, that name. And uh, here's uh, Star Trek photo buttons, Star Trek pins, books. You know, here's another um, of the inside Star Trek uh, fanzine. I believe this drawing, yes, this draw drawing is by Greg Jean, my friend who built the, later would build the city in Blade Runner and uh, the mothership in Close Encounters, as well as contributing to Star Trek itself. Amazing guy still with us, thank heavens. And uh, and so this is a great, great, great um, fanzine. Again, one of a kind. Here's uh, Inside Star Trek Three that has a, a, a little caricature of DeForest Kelly and great articles, really cool stuff. And uh, here's Inside Star Trek Four, which has a uh, our captain in a pensive moment. And uh, it's just really, really cool stuff. And uh, you know, again, you know, where else are you going to find this? I mean, uh, just incredible, incredible. So then continuing on, and we haven't even gotten halfway through, uh, Star, Star Trek Association for Revival. This probably would be just after the show was canceled. Here's uh, sketches. This was sold by Roddenberry's company during the run of the show. That's Kirk. You know, sketches of uh, Sulu, DeForest Kelly. Now, also remember, if you get a PDF of this stuff, you can print out any of this stuff from from that PDF. So it's uh, so if, if any of these things are things you'd want to put on your wall, you know. It's, and again, this is from like maybe 1966, 67, 68. I mean, if, this is just again, this was not this was not sold in stores. This was sold via Gene Roddenberry's own company. It would be him and Major Barrett later, Major Bla Mary, Major Barrett Roddenberry, kind of you know stuffing envelopes with their with their office assistants. So Walter Koenig, and then of course one of Gene Roddenberry himself. And then also another thing they sold through Roddenberry's catalog were the Enterprise Blueprints, which are, again, this is before major publishers were publishing this stuff. This was Roddenberry just trying to, to make some uh, some folding money for himself. So uh, <laughs> so let's see, what else do we have here? This is, here, look at this. Inside Star Trek number one. This is the first Star Trek fanzine put out by Gene Roddenberry's own company and sold through his catalog. And it is just great. It's got articles 
um, by Dorothy Fontana, by Gene Roddenberry. Uh, yeah, the, and the illustrator is Alicia Austin, as I, as I remembered from when I was 10. And uh, it has articles about, you know, speeches that, that Roddenberry gave, all sorts of stuff, you know, from the, written by the people who were making the show at the time. And uh, here's, then Roddenberry, to continue with his catalogs, he would also branch out to other, selling things from other shows, Search, Kung Fu, as well as Star Trek. Again, this is from the mid 60s. And this is, cat yeah. And so let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, Star Trek catalog two. So this is the catalog he did after, where you could get the insignias. You could get all sorts of cool stuff, film clips, all sorts of things from Star Trek. What's this over here? This is, yeah, more, more, uh, catalog pages and Star Trek scripts. And they didn't pay the writers for any royalty for selling these scripts. So I think there was some brouhaha over that ultimately. So then let's see what else we have here. So now, now we start to get into a potpourri of things. So some of it is later stuff from Star Trek The Next Generation. So this is a catalog of Star Trek Next Generation items from the first season of the show. And it's very cool. Here's, uh, let's see, what else do we have in here? Um, Star Trek The Next Generation toys, the, the catalogs for them. Here we have a, a Starship Captain Insignia from Harv Bennett and Gene Roddenberry to me. Okay, Harv Bennett was doing the movies at that point in the 70s. Here's uh, early Star Trek books that were for sale soon after uh, Star Trek was canceled. Here's Star Trek The Final Frontier video game, a flyer uh, on that. Here's a, a flyer on Star Trek audiobooks that were available. These are all, again, the originals, so we'll be scanning them. This is Lincoln Enterprises catalog for a few years after Star Trek went off the air. Uh, and this is, you know, things they were selling later on when, when Star Trek The Next Generation was, was just starting. And so they have things from both the Star Trek, the original Star Trek, and from um, Next Gen. And let's see, here's a Star Trek MasterCard, because by the time we get in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, of course, Star Trek has taken off as a huge uh, fan following, and now everything. Here's a, an American Cancer Society ad from Spock. I have several of those. Leave the, don't smoke, live long and prosper, leave the pack behind, which is ironic, of course, because um, Leonard Nimoy died of, uh, I believe, of emphysema from, from the years he smoked. Uh, this is, a flyer advertising the forthcoming Sci-Fi Channel, okay, and uh, which had just, which was just about to uh, debut, and it lists the shows that they'll be having on them. This is um, another Star Trek ad. Uh, let's see what else do we have in here. Uh, this is toys. This is an ad for Star Trek Five figurines. This is, uh, and again, this is the stuff that one tends not to see or, or come across because it's a it's a fa it's what's called ephemera so you might be able to find those toys on on ebay but finding the advertisements would be you know very unlikely so and here kelly Frias, one of the great uh science fiction artists did a portfolio of star trek portraits now the one of michelle nichols there was a, one signed by kelly Frias to her it may have been the original and uh, and that one of Spock in the spacesuit is on my wall over there by that spacesuit. <laughs> and uh, then later he did this uh, Star Trek Kung Fu Questor uh, catalog. And Questor was a series that uh, that he wrote. Uh, Gene Roddenberry tried to get off the ground with Robert Foxworth, and it didn't go to series. But it was uh, sort of the precursor to Data. It was about an android. And here's his catalog selling selling stuff. This is probably from around maybe 1970, maybe. So, and then here is when Star Trek V came out, one of the things you could get would be a Star Trek V marshmallow dispenser. Okay, so <laughs> I think they feature that in the movie. Here's Star Trek Three, the, the Search for Spock memor memorabilia supplement. These are all things you could get when Star Trek Three came out. Um, here's Star Trek memorial catalog, memorabilia catalog, which includes Star Trek, Kung Fu, Search, Genesis Two, Questor. Genesis Two was, was another Roddenberry pilot, and it includes, you know, I mean, it, this includes such things as posters you can get, including Spock giving Richard Nixon a mind meld. So again, <laughs> late 60s and, uh, you know, early 70s. And uh, just, and, and again, this is, this is the Lincoln Enterprises company. So this is Roddenberry's own company selling stuff. Now, at the same time, uh, there was a little high school science Star Trek convention 
that I attended, and they passed this mimeographed sheet out with, if you liked these individual Star Trek episodes, these are science fiction novels you might enjoy reading. So that was their recommendation. This is when Star Trek was on the air. This is uh, an ad for Alan Dean Foster's Star Trek uh, logs, which were uh, novelizations of the Star Trek animated show that DC Fontana ran. And, uh, and then here's catalog number five from Lincoln Enterprises. And again, you, it's, and all of these catalogs are different. They all have different things in them and different things available. This, these are, are the patches, the insignia that Gene Roddenberry's own company sold. So that's, you know, science, engineer. Well, this is science. I think that was engineering. And this, of course, is the captain's star. And these were from Roddenberry's own company sold while the show was on the air. So very, you know, so these probably are very, very similar to ones that were actually worn by the actors on the show because it was all, you know, coming out of one place. So, so these were, those were not fan-made. Those were Roddenberry, you know. And then here's a Star Trek envelope uh, with, from um, Roddenberry's company, you know, with, uh, let's see if there's a letter in there. Nope, that's another, another cool envelope. I loved their stationery. It was really, really cool. And then, uh, and then this is Movie Land Wax Museum when they had uh, the stars of Star Trek uh, as part of the exhibit. And uh, so I saved this as well. It's got, it's got the bridge with Scotty and all, all of that stuff and Kirk and Spock. And here's uh, Star Trek. Here's another um, little, little Star Trek item, Star Trek and Star Trek Next Generation. It's stuff that you can buy and models you can build and all sorts of stuff and uh, the tricorders you can buy, etc. Here is a trading card of Wesley Crusher with Beverly Crusher. Interestingly enough, Gates McFadden is in the new show we're creating, Sweet Haven with Rockne O'Bannon. And let's see what else we got here. So this is the first Star Trek convention. B. Joe Trimble ran the campaign that got Star Trek a third season. And I was picketing along with her outside NBC when I was a kid. She put, she and her husband, John, put on two conventions, Equicon, was a Star Trek convention, 1975, very early, and FilmCon was a, a science fiction film convention. So this is the little flyer advertising it on both sides. And really cool. This is, this is an ad for one of the Star Trek novels, the second giant Star Trek novel, Strangers from the Sky. And that's how they were promoting that. And this is Protect Your High Tech. It has Worf. And it says, protect your high-tech investment. And I guess it's the exclusive statics formula acts like a defect deflector shield against harmful dust and static to safely clean, it, clean and protect. So this is an ad for something that cleans your um, electronic equipment using Wharf. And then here are, is a Star Trek card uh, of Kirk and Spock from Star Trek The Motion Picture. And here is a card of Kirk fighting the Gorn. And I think we have gotten to the bottom of this of my Star Trek dossier but you can see this is stuff that you could spend hours and days reading and enjoying and and you will be the uh, admired kid on your block uh, if it's a block made up of Trekkies or Trekkers <laughs> they were all called Trekkies at this point I mean frankly you know this was so early the, the ones who really got the message early the ones who saw the show from the beginning and loved it that's um, you know, who this was all aimed at, and I was certainly on the front lines of that. I, I was there the first night that Star Trek debuted with George Clayton Johnson's, the, uh, you know, the, the Salt Vampire episode, you know, so it was uh, really amazing, really unique. So that's, that's the Star Trek dossier, so we're going to put that up on our um, uh, uh, Kickstarter campaign, and you can um, uh, buy, buy this in its entirety as a PDF, a downloadable PDF, and then you can print out things to your heart's content and you can be part of um, what it was like to be there when Star Trek came out in 1966 and uh, before everyone in the world knew what Star Trek was. So that's it for now. Thanks, guys, and we'll talk to you again real soon.